Hey, it's Rob here. Um, in this video, I'm going to uh, look at aluminium that you can use to cast um, homemade gear blanks. Um, for those people that are into making their own gears, um, this was a reference video which will uh, link back. Um, there'll be a link in the video description take you to my website which shows you how to make simple spur gears um, without a lot of fancy equipment uh, just using a metal lathe and a mill slide. So this is a video which basically um, deals with uh, one aspect of that and that is how to cast your own gear blank um, just using your simple little backyard furnace. So we're going to look at the various forms of aluminium that are available and what you should and shouldn't use. So I've got a, some samples here of um, commonly found aluminium We'll start off with what you shouldn't use. Uh, generally, extruded aluminium um, tends to be on the on the soft side. I mean, some aluminium window frames can be hard, but uh, a lot of extruded aluminium is soft and it's quite light. And the weight of the aluminium, to a large degree, uh, has um, some significance uh, as an ind indicator on on the hardness. The, I mean, here's some machine grade aluminium per, um, purchased, and I mean, that's fairly heavy for aluminium. Whereas here's some aluminium which is unknown grade, and that's very light. So, I mean, that's aluminium I, I wouldn't use to make a gear because being light, it'll be, invariably, it'll be less dense, and um, um, there's a good chance it won't be as strong. It doesn't hold true right through, but it's an indicator you can use. So let's look at what we've got. We've got industrial grade, commercial machine grade aluminium. There's another piece there. Um, that's industrial grade, machine grade. And here's a blank that uh, I made up, which is um, just from scrap. <laughs> you can't tell the difference looking at it, but then of course the aluminium looks pretty similar in a lot of ways. But that is um, a good dense piece of aluminium and that was just made from built down scrap. So we looked at what we don't want to use. We don't want to use extruded aluminium. We don't want to use this stuff either which is aluminium heat sink. You get that in a lot of you know computer equipment and stuff like that. That tends to be very light, very soft, very soft, very cheesy. Here's another piece of it. Once again it's extruded. You see they extrude that out in long strips and just slice it off like bread. It's light and it's soft. We look at what is good to use uh, and readily available. Here is some good stuff. This is the this is the end casting uh, off of an electric motor, just an ordinary, you know, AC um, old fridge type motor. They always have a they tend to have an aluminium end on them. Um, each end of the uh, of the, uh, the fuel bindings. That's good stuff. If you try and bend that, it will break rather than bend, and uh, that would have a very high silicon content in it, in it compared to, to this stuff here. Um, here's an example here of some aluminium that came out of an old treadmill motor, and you can see it's snapped rather than bent, and uh, it's quite heavy. Um, there'd be a, a fair bit of silicon in that, or um, possibly even a bit of copper to make it harder. But um, that would be excellent to make a gear out of. So there's sort of things to consider. Pistons. Pistons out of engines. Excellent. This is really hard stuff. Uh, very good quality. Be better quality than that for sure. And, uh, you know, pistons in motors get a real pounding and they uh, have to deal with extreme pressure, um, heat and everything. So. Pistons from um, piston aluminium, great. Probably one of the better things you can use. Even uh, the Conrod in, in, on this motor um, is aluminium. Well, quite often they're steel, but this one's got an aluminium Conrod as well. And once again, that would be good aluminium to use because there's a lot of force put onto an ancient Conrod and it has to have uh, good rigidity. So, yeah, that'd be good. And as I said, um, this came out of an old treadmill, and uh, it's your general die cast uh, aluminium that they use. But um, it is, you know, eminently suitable for making gears out of. In the past, a lot of lathes had 
gears made out of uh, mixed alloy, aluminium, um, zamac was one of the materials they used, and uh, it did the job. Um, and uh, yeah, you know, there's no reason why you can't use aluminium and get good life out of those gears. Here's a blob of melted down aluminium that was a leftover, so when I um, do my next casting, I'll just melt that down. And the beauty of casting your own gears, uh, your own blanks, is that if you, you know, do your machining and something goes wrong, you just put it back in the pot and melt it down again. Simple as that. So there you go. Something, something to consider. And um, if you uh, want to, you know, make your own gear blanks, well, it's, um, it's not that difficult. You have to play safe and there's no room for error. Um, follow all the safety precautions. There's a lot of information on the internet about um, casting aluminium uh, in a backyard, a simple backyard furnace. Read all the precautionary stuff. If you don't feel confident, don't do it because, uh, you know, you wouldn't want to get uh, injured in any way um, from uh, molten metal. So there you go. I hope you found it interesting. Um, I will do a video later. Um, showing the simple little furnace that I use, but as I said, there's a lot of information out there on melting down aluminium, and uh, yeah, use the hard grades, and uh, your gear should last as long as you do. Okay, see you next time. Cheers.